All right, welcome back for part three. Uh, we're going to look at some code examples for the singleton. So the singleton is a concept that you can apply to whichever class you want. We're going to do it with the logger class from uh, the first part. So this is my code for the logger class. I have the constructor whenever I instantiate a logger. I create a new log file. I just instantiate this file here, logfile.txt. It's stored in a private field variable. And then whenever I want to log something to this file, I call the log method. I give it a string argument and it is appended to the file. So we just put the new text here at the end of the file and then we close the file again. That's the idea. I want to transform this into a singleton so that my logger becomes a singleton and all the classes in the system that wants to log something out uses this same instance. Right? So we had three points that we wanted to uh, you know, remember for, for something to be a singleton. We would need a private constructor, I need a private static field variable, and I need a public static method to return this instance. Right? So we have that up here in my UML diagram. We apply the first point. Right? I want to have a private static field variable. We add that over here. Here we go. Now I, now I now have a private static field variable of type logger, the same as the class so itself. I call it instance. You can call it whatever you want. All right. Second part is we want to have a private constructor so that we, when we create this, we write the code for this class, we define the only way to instantiate instances of this class. So I want a private constructor, we change public to be private. There we go. And then we need this third part here, a global method to uh, retrieve our instance. We add that uh, down here. Here we go. I create a public static method. It returns an object of, ty of type logger and the method is called get instance. Um, so as we saw previously, uh, we use lazy instantiation here. That is one approach. I check if the instance, my field variable here, if it is null, then I create a new instance of it. And then we can return that instance. All right. So I have now transformed my logger class into a singleton. There can now only ever be one instance of the logger and all classes who want to log something, they will use the same instance to make sure that everything is logged into the same um, to the same file. All right. So when I want to use this logger class from somewhere else, I have a, an example here. Uh, very simple, but this piece of code be, could be put into any of your classes. I want to first retrieve my logger instance, right? So I call on the logger class itself. I call the get instance. I can do that because get instance is static. So it's called upon the, the class rather than an instance. I now have my instance logger of type logger, and then I can call the method log with some uh, message here. Hello, good day. And this will now be outputted to the log file, right? So you see that the static method is called on the class itself, capital L for the class, and the log method, which is not static, is called on the instance, right? The instance here. The logger, get instance here, is static. It was called on the class. The log is not static, so that's called on instances of the class. All right. Um, to verify that I now, if I were to call this method here, multiple times I would I wanted to retrieve multiple instances of this logger or from different classes I I need to verify that all use the same instance of the logger right so I don't have duplicates or multiple instances I could create my test a unit test when this is run I call singleton get instance this could be the logger class we just have a general case so I have a singleton class I call get instance. So I get a, a reference to that um, 
singleton instance. I do the same thing again. I now I now have another reference. So I have reference one and reference two, and they both point to a singleton instance. Now, if this singleton pattern is correctly implemented, these two references will point to the same instance. So I print them both out. Um, I print out reference one, I print out reference two, and when this is printed out, the default to string will print out the memory address. So the output is, we can see the same, the two references point to the same thing, and we also uh, call the assert equals to say that uh, these two strings are, strings are actually the same. So one way to verify that we have two reference to the references to the same instance. All right. So to sum up, for the singleton pattern, if you have a class and you want to make it into a singleton, you need three things. If you use the approach I have shown you, you need a private static field variable, the same type as the class itself. It should hold the instance that you want to be able to provide. You have a private constructor so that we control when the singleton instance is created and when it is reused. And then you have this static get instance method, which uh, is used to retrieve the instance itself. In my example, we have used lazy instantiation or initialization. Um, that is one approach of many. All right, so that was the uh, singleton pattern in uh, code. This is the end of part three.